Thank you. Um, so in this uh, project, we have to tackle three main issues. <clears throat> the first one is um, what kind of gestures would uh, listeners uh, perform when they want to specify a particular type of music? Uh, second issue is uh, how to find the similar type of gestures uh, in the music, so especially here in recordings of uh, Nordic, uh, uh, Norwegian uh, folk music, and to use computers to uh, find uh, features from the music and then extract gestures out of this. And the third uh, part of this project is uh, really developing an app for a smartphone. Oh, this is an app. And where you can draw that gesture you, by moving the phone. So you specify a, a query, and then you want to get a particular gesture that will correspond as closely as possible to this uh, query. So this is the retrieval part. So we first consider this idea of uh, what kind of uh, gestures should be considered in this respect. Um, so, as Alexander uh, explained, so that music is very natural for us to you know, listeners, uh, human, to move when uh, listening to music. Uh, so, it's also natural to uh, make hand gestures to indicate uh, music. So, there are a lot of research out, uh, out of this. Uh, there are currently research uh, here in the department about analyzing a free hand sound tracing of uh, melodic phrases. And so this can be applied in particular to our research to understand what kind of gestures uh, users will tend to perform. So there is one idea in this uh, research is that uh, the pitch verticality is uh, quite uh, important so that the height of your hands can correspond to the height of the notes itself, the pitch height. Uh, there could be also the axis of time, so you could draw a gesture from left to right, for instance. Uh, there is this issue that uh, this metaphor is maybe not, that it works for a short uh, intervals, but for long melodies it might be a little tricky to trace the whole uh, phrase, but maybe if, if it's just an arc or a more general contour, gross contour, it, it could work. So there is this idea that there are different types of representation from very specific pitch, then pitch interval, or simply contour ascending or descending. Uh, right, so uh, in that uh, publication that Alexander mentioned, uh, when we look at the different type of strategies that users will perform with their hands, just using one hand could be one natural strategy. So that's what we will consider in this project. <clears throat> so we did a little experiment where we asked participants, including, including ourselves, uh, to uh, draw gesture when listening to a particular piece of music, I will show an example in the next line of the music, and so and not looking at each other, so not being influenced. Uh, so we listen several times, so we get used to that music, and we use particular um, trace, um, what do you call a marker, uh, because we use a motion capture lab laboratory uh, then to track those uh, gestures. <laughs> computer rendering of people will use actually uh, like a kind of pulsation or metrical pulsation and some other might doing a kind of mixture of both or even more subtle uh, aspects. So what kind of strategies can we distinguish here? So we were mentioning about this pitch verticality. And then <clears throat> the dynamics, uh, pianissimo, fortissimo might influence a lot on the gesture. And then we mentioned this uh, per session metrical structure. And then there could be some more refined uh, type of uh, considerations, such as melodic structure. So if a pattern is repeated many times, then maybe there is this idea of cycle. So we can then perform some, some cycles. And that, that can be very more subtle, more complex aspects uh, based on semantic, like open, close, or um, emotion, and so on. Right, so a lot of things that could be considered uh, for the user gestures. 
Um, so now in the music, uh, how can we find this type of gestures automatically, automatically in the music using computers because we need to perform on very large catalogs. So I will um, first uh, mention, so we use a part of this uh, folk music collection from the National Library and specifically, specifically we use uh, 343 uh, recordings um, one or two hours each, uh, recordings from the 50s, 60s, or what was it, something like that? Well, up to 60s, Yep, 60s, 70s, for, uh, to clear copyright problems. Uh, the issue here is that it's, uh, you have this one, two hour recording, and, but it's a succession of a lot of things. There could be a violin, Hardinger, violin, uh, filler, and then there could be uh, singing and so on. There is some, there is metadata about uh, this uh, description of those files. Um, maybe it's not completely systematic and it's not machine readable. We need to make some uh, ways to get uh, information that could be used directly in our, our project. Um, and especially we don't know exactly the beginning and ending, ending times um, of each uh, piece of music. So we have to find it uh, ourselves, so we are now working on getting those uh, automated segmentation by performing some, for instance, spectral analysis to detect the silence and then categorize if it's voice or music and what kind of instrument. So now we have these different uh, tunes uh, separately, separately and now we want to find those uh, gestures for each tune. So let's consider the first strategy, uh, pitch verticality. So, to extract pitch, if it's a simple instrument um, with uh, just one note at a time, a monodic instrument, like a trumpet, it could be simple to extract the pitch because uh, you, from the audio waveform, you can see that it's very periodic. And you can see that the period here, for instance, is three milliseconds, so, so you can immediately get uh, the pitch height of this. For instance, you compute use this so-called autocorrelation function and you see the peaks indicate the periodic periodicity of three milliseconds. One issue here is that if you find a periodicity of, one, of, of a given lag or a given frequency, then you can also find all the periods that, that are multiples of this uh, time lag. Um, so it's getting a little more difficult then to find a pitch if you have a lot of uh, pitch content in one given sound. So, for instance, uh, here we have a um, Hardinger uh, fiddle recording. I will play in the next slide. And this is just the same autocorrelation function that I showed here. I mean, the same type of computation, but computed time after time, frame after frame. You move the window, and you see the, each, for each frame, you see the autocorrelation function in a column. And here, instead of time, we have frequencies. But so you can see here that it's a kind of like a score, music score, or like a piano roll representation, so like a mechanic piano uh, piece of paper. You can see the different notes <coughs> as uh, lines here. But the problem here is that for each uh, pitch height, uh, for each note, you have also all the harmonics, I mean, all those uh, multiples of those periodicities that are displayed here. Because it's frequency, it's inverted. I won't go into too much detail, but so we have, as, as it is the frequency axis, all the harmonics are sub, sub harmonics actually. But the main message here is that using this autocorrelation function, it doesn't work that well when we consider uh, polyphonic instruments, especially a, vi uh, a violin or a fiddle, um, because you see it's, uh, it can't find a really clear periodicity in the, from the waveform. Whereas if we use spectrogram, it's, uh, it looks much um, uh, precise. This is no spectrogram, it's just you have the time from left to right, and you have pitch from low to high. So actually it's really like when you draw um, music, we have this very natural type of representation, vertical time and, I mean, horizontal time and vertical pitch. And so we can see again uh, the um, piano roll representation, all the different notes here. This time the problem is that, so I will play the, these excerpts, it will be better. Let me try again. Yeah. 
das ist dieses so. You hear there are two notes played at the same time. There is a kind of drone pitch that is played uh, always here, the same. And there is a melody which is here. But at the same time, we have all the harmonics of those uh, fundament fundamentals. So, for instance, for the drone, which I was showing, yeah, okay. um, this is a fundamental of the drone and all the harmonics, harmonics. And then this is the first note that is played in the melody with the harmonics. And the premise for the second note, um, there is a kind of fusion between the drone sound and this note. Why? Because this second note is an octave, just octave above the drone note. So if, when we say how to find the actual notes there, and if we say we just take the, sorry, the, we just take the fundamental and we remove all the harmonics, then we might remove too many things. Because in our case, for this note, uh, it's, it's also a harmonic of this one, so we shouldn't just remove it. So we, we have to be more subtle. Um, then in the current state-of-the-art uh, type of approach, what's happening is that there are two steps in the approach. First, for each frame, we try to find all those different uh, partials, like represented here schematically like this. And then for this series of partials, we try to decide for that frame what could be the notes and which of those partials are just harmonics of that fundamental. Then we get all these uh, fundamentals represented here as in white. And the second step is to try to construct the notes themselves based on those uh, detected uh, frequencies of those uh, fundamental. Um, and the one issue is that uh, still with this type of method, it's not always very robust because this is an example of results you could get. And this in rectangles, you have the actual notes that were played. And in cross, you have what is detected by uh, the algorithm. And so sometimes it will find uh, other frequencies that were not uh, actual notes. And um, so then I try to develop a method that tries to, to see, because there is a problem here that you have these two steps that are a little redundant because you try to select what are the notes for each frame and then again you try to track and construct the notes. And the idea of this new method is uh, we take all the possible partials and then we try to detect those notes uh, by giving a, a score for each possible fundamental and computing the evolution of the score over time. Let's say, I will not go more into more detail. And so, for instance, for our particular case here, we have a score for each possible uh, note candidate. And we see here that at that particular position, there is an increase of energy over time for this fundamental, but also the harmonic in particular. And doing this, we can construct the notes. Uh, yeah, basically, I, I can't go into more details, but um, this enabled to get uh, results that uh, sounds quite okay. Uh, I will show an example here. Um, I will play uh, this file, so we, you will hear the original recording. I think it was maybe on the on that on your left. And you might hear uh, the, like a robot playing the automated transcription on a kind of electric piano. Uh, beware that the tuning is not the same because it's used a MIDI, we, we use a, a standard tuning. So it's out, out of tune, but don't focus on this. Uh, just about the melody itself. So let's play this. Again from the start. Some the, the phrases, the notes are not exactly precise, 
but so that's a good start to get uh, those um, melodic gestures. But it's not f finished. It's not the end of the the, the problem because from yeah. What we got so far is this type of piano roll, like mechanical piano uh, paper roll. Uh, but we still need to connect the dots in some ways to find those actual melodies, to trace, the, to find the voices, the different voices. It might look simple, we might consider as just some kind of time and pitch uh, similarity or uh, closeness, uh, but it's a little more complex than that. And uh, I'm working on this uh, right now. And once you have those uh, different voices, um, then you need to segment those voices to, to, to find those little phrases. So we can use uh, like silence, for instance, but we need also to add other heuristics uh, based on, it could be uh, the, the um, tonal or the the key of the music, the modal or tonal analysis of the music or the metrical structure also could um, play a role in the phrasing. Um, and then we get those different phrases, but then we could then uh, cluster them into uh, motifs that are repeated. So there is this uh, necessity of uh, grouping them together to find those groups, so those motivic uh, classes. And, but we need also to take into consideration the, the fact that there is transformation ornamentation uh, uh, of the music, so that it's not always repeated exactly, and we need to be able to track those differences. <clears throat> and these are uh, problems that um, I was working on this type of problem also previously for other type of repertoire. Uh, for um, traditional um, uh, Arabic maka music and Turkish maka music. Uh, so it's a kind of extension. We were also trying to find segmentation, but it was on monody, so that now we have, uh, we apply this uh, for polyphonies or contrapoint, we could say, for this case. Um, right. So that's how we could get those, uh, find those melodic gestures from the music. And this, um, then I can just evoke for other type of gesture strategies. So for dynamics, the uh, good news is it's, uh, it's much simpler than uh, for pitch because uh, just by looking at the evolution of the energy of the dynamic of, of the volume of the sound, you can have an idea directly of um, the change of, uh, of nuances. Uh, but uh, now if we want to, another idea of uh, dynamics is the idea that for each note there could be some kind of uh, transformation of the, of the accentuations. So we need to have an idea of uh, attack, for instance, of each note. And that is, this is quite difficult to find the notes for this type of music. But now that we made an automated transcription, we can directly from this uh, try to to have an estimation of this uh, dynamic representation of each of the nodes from the spectrogram. So we could have an estimation of the attack and the, of the decay phase, phase of each node. And then for pulsation and metrical structure, we can start uh, from the, the dynamics also. We have the dynamic curve and we try to find the periodicity to have an estimation of uh, of the rhythm, of a regular rhythm. But the problem is that um, in Hardinger, or in maybe in general in Norwegian folk music, you can often have uh, a symmetrical matter. Uh, so it's not that simple to find some kind of precision. We need to consider some cultural aspect that, um, yes, uh, that could be. Uh, and bar with a seven beat or nine beat or something like that. So we might need also to consider uh, the, the melody itself as a part of, uh, of some inputs to have an estimation of the metrical structure. Uh, right. Um, then we, there could be the consideration of more um, advanced uh, aspects such as finding melodic structure, like uh, the, the structural construction of the melody based on 
succession of motifs or something like that, and aspects related to semantic or emotion. So, uh, for instance, trying to predict the emotional content based on our uh, analysis of the music, music, and we we did some previous approach on this, uh, trying to uh, estimate the emotional content <coughs> that could be applied to this. And so uh, all this uh, work on uh, audio analysis uh, we implemented in MATLAB in this MIR toolbox that Alexander mentioned. Uh, that is available for free, but it's in, Matla in MATLAB. And so uh, where you can get uh, estimation of the timbre, pitch, dynamics, rhythm, tonality, structures, and so on. Um, so. And it's such an idea also that we can use these different features as well as possible description of the of the gesture that could be a candidate for uh, describing how the users uh, uh, understand the music. So maybe something about the timbre can have an aspect also uh, in the listener's understanding of the music. Uh, and uh, the mutual box is more directly uh, audio analysis and this new uh, toolbox mining suite is a kind of integration of the purely analysis of, of audio with analysis of the score itself as, as i went mentioning we need to from the score we need to find the voice we need to segment into phrases uh, and so on so this part is uh, taken care of by uh, this uh, mining suite where we also plan to integrate analysis of uh, gestures of video and so on. Uh, so that was uh, about finding the gestures from the music. Um, then the last uh, part is uh, we got, uh, so we want to create this uh, app, so that we are sure in the end we have a first prototype. Uh, where you can draw the gesture by moving your phone. Um, and then the idea is to find the closest um, gesture from the catalog of music that will uh, correspond to that particular gesture. So how to perform a correct retrieval from that query um, based on different uh, type of uh, considerations. Uh, and in particular, one issue is that um, we can't really try to compare our gesture with all the possible descriptions available in the catalog. We need to represent each piece of music by some particular characteristic gesture. So this is exactly what in, there is, in, in this discipline of uh, building systems that retrieve a particular information is called uh, information retrieval uh, domain of research. And in this uh, domain of research, there is this idea of uh, indexing. So that's exactly this, that you, from, for each document, you try to find some important index uh, that will represent that document, for in our case, to find some particular gesture characteristic of each uh, piece of music. Um, this is computed before the actual uh, search, before the, before the app actually is running. And then when you want to find a particular gesture, you, you just in a way, uh, try to match the, the query that you, with your gesture, to the, all those different indices. <coughs> And there are different types of possibilities to get uh, ind indexes. So, for instance, uh, n-grams, something uh, like uh, short, uh, constant time um, description of, the, of the, um, your document. Uh, or you can some, have something more uh, musically relevant, such as this particular segment um, based on how you perceive music. So, I mean, uh, in our case, we already, I already mentioned that, that one way to, to find the most important gesture is first to segment based on cognitive principles, for instance, to try to segment it the way we listeners segment the music, and try to select those segments based on uh, motivical analysis and so on. Um, right. Um, and in the 
current version of uh, what I will show, we haven't considered all these problems, so we select the first uh, phrase that appears in the music, which also can correspond to uh, one important uh, characterization of the music, the, what is called often the insipid uh, of the music, the so first phrase. <coughs> um, so now we uh, right. So uh, now we want to match the user gesture with the gestures from the music, and we need to find some correct representation to find identities and similarities between those two types of uh, information. <coughs> and so we have to consider, for instance, if we consider this, gesture, this uh, strategy of uh, pitch elevation. Um, so there are different ways of describing uh, this pitch um, s uh, dimension. And uh, one is uh, to use absolute pitch representation. So that would mean it's really, really like theremin. We would say this height is correspond to a given frequency and so on. This would be a little too difficult for non-expert to use. Then we can just simply use a pitch interval. So if you move above a certain number of centimeters, that means that you will move to a certain uh, interval in music. Or you can get more and more um, general and in the end simply consider ascending and descending. So a simple description of cross control, ascending, descending. Um, then you can uh, describe time or not. So you can say, I want uh, to represent uh, the actual duration of the gesture and compare the actual duration of the gestures from the user with the actual duration from uh, in the music. Or you could describe those uh, time positions as rhythmic values in a given metrical structure. Or you could also ignore time, if you, if you like. Um, and then about sampling, uh, we could say we represent all the possible notes in the music. We want to find all those possible notes in our gesture. Or we could say, for instance, that we are just interested in the change of control. So we could say here it's just ascending and then descending. And here also the same, ascending here and descending. Um, in the current uh, version of uh, our algor algorithms, we consider this uh, just a cross control, just looking at the change of control over time, but looking at durations precisely. So in that way, um, we will try to find a gesture that will correspond to the, to the user's gesture with the same tempo, in a way. Uh, right. So now, um, to try to finish about the description of the system, um, if the user draw a particular gesture like this, and if you want to find that maybe that gesture from the catalog is somewhat similar, um, so we can uh, represent this uh, in terms of a dynamic time walking. Dy time, dynamic time walking. So. No, the gesture, user gesture, is represented uh, uh, vertically, and we can try to so to see the alignment uh, in this type of matrix. And we can say, here, uh, for instance, this represents the fact that we align the beginning of the phase of this gesture in the music with the beginning of the ascending phase uh, in the user representation. We we see that the duration of the two are not exactly similar, so we have some kind of penalty. And then we track the descending phase of uh, the music with the descending phase of the listener, of the user, sorry. Then we skip, for instance, the ascending phase of the, in the music, and, and so on. And doing this, we can find different strategies to match these two uh, uh, curves. We, we have a score for each possible strategy. <coughs> Uh, and then we take the one with uh, the lowest penalty or the highest similarity. And for instance, in this case, it will be ascending match to this ascending phase. So this, this line actually. So descending corresponding to this descending. And then the, this descending phase is prolonged here and mapped to this one. Uh, right. 
So that's about how the system works. And um, so we have this uh, app that uh, is now available in the App Store. It works on uh, iPhone and iPad on the recent version. Why? Because we use uh, the Apple uh, Augmented Reality AR Kit. Um, this enables to track the device precisely. But you move so the device and it tracks. It uses a sensor of fuse, fusion. Look, um, considering both the um, inertia and the camera uh, video. <coughs> And so I will show the first prototype, <coughs> where is, because it's not automated uh, yet, we had to manually integrate the information. So you have uh, just 10 music tunes indexed by Inchipit, I mentioned. Okay, and I have a video demonstration here. Is the sound thing. So you move like this, you see the curve. And then you get a piece of music. And you, you see the, um, there is an alignment of the two uh, versions, the audio version on the, at the bottom with a musical contour, and on the top, uh, your own gesture. Sorry. Oh, no. No, let me try it. You see, when uh, there is a, some part that is skipped, it's represented in red. And to finish, so the version that we plan to have for May, for the end of the project, uh, we try to, ex to uh, integrate uh, large parts or maybe all the catalog that we, is our disposal by automating all this analysis. Uh, so yes, uh, segmentation, transcription, uh, extraction. Uh, we try to integrate rhythm and metrical gestures, although it might be a little uh, challenging. Um, uh, considering musical ornamentation, and maybe motivic analysis and other, other f musical features from uh, MIR, and we could consider also adding uh, semantic and affective gestures. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier, for for that presentation. Um, we do have time for a few questions before we before we have a coffee break. Anyone? I, I just wondered, uh, the, in the end, when you demonstrated the, the app, yeah. uh, could this be compared to turning an, an uh, iPhone into a Teramin? Yes, yes. It okay. Is, yeah. so, so, so to some extent, this is uh, uh, proposing to people to play mm. uh, with the Teramin yeah, yeah. And, and to see if they can recreate uh, the, the, the music they want to find through this instrument. Yeah. Like, okay. Could be but but most people would also try to hum or or, or sing. Yeah. Could you uh, use both uh, this information and and this theremin information? That could be considered. It's not supposed to be part of the the project to consider a humming, but actually it's very. It would be simple to uh, get uh, an extraction of uh, the pitch content of the humming, and then we could just uh, integrate in the in the app. Yeah, yeah. true. 
All the questions? Well, I can ask a question about the um, scaling this up, um, because one thing is to have yeah. 10 pieces, another is to have 300, but um, I guess a long-term ambition here is to, to be able to do this on the entire catalogue of the National Library. Um, uh, what are the biggest problems when you're thinking of, of scale? Uh, already uh, in this case, already to get to this version 1.0, I'm a little concerned that uh, currently the mapping, the retrieval parts, seems to be a little slow for just a few excerpts. Um, but I guess this is a matter of implementation of the um, retrieval algorithms. But yes, in the long term, I, I think if we want to scale to a very large catalog, we need also just to uh, remove um, features such as we can't consider all the possible motifs that are in each piece, but we have to select some more important uh, motifs. Uh, waiting for or to get more computational uh, power to have more detailed uh, analysis. <coughs> but yes, it's an important question. Maybe there could be a way to make it this more clever than um, like structuring the catalog so that uh, retrieval would be faster. Or, yeah. Thank you. Uh, just a question. Uh, any ideas of how to implement effective gestures? Because uh, in the motion domain, I think we know quite a lot about uh, the state of uh, mind of people. They move differently when they are angry versus mm -hmm. when they are happy and so on. But how would you do the matching of that to the music, to the sound signal? Yeah, maybe we could uh, try to uh, um, predict the affective content of those gestures. So that we represent in a 3D space, for instance, emotional space, affective, uh, activity, balance, and so on. And from the music, we can do that as well. We did some research previously uh, to predict the affective content. And in that space, we can do the retrieval. Yes. Um, I have to ask a question which is a uh, little bit re related to scaling, is that when you have a more extended catalog, how, what, is, what do you think could be some ways to analyze the goodness of fit? Because uh, there mm. is, for 10 pieces, it's perhaps easy to think of some kind of a ground truth, but when yeah. it gets... Uh, mm. <laughs> That's, uh, I think in the music information retrieval community, there are all these questions that um, are discussed. Um, I think already in this MIR, uh, they, they have these uh, challenges uh, to, to compare systems that do this retrieval. And it's still always uh, debatable how, how to find the ground truth. It's a very difficult question. Um, and it's very subjective, uh, so uh, I would guess it's not very definite. We can't g give very exact results. That, that's a big question. Okay, was it one question there or no? No. Yep, on this. <laughs> uh, thank you for an excellent presentation. Um, I'm wondering. Uh, just following up on the uh, effective gestures, but also uh, in terms of uh, timbre or textural, mm -hmm. um, for instance, something perceptual like uh, bright, dull, hard, soft, yeah. is that something that is considered? Or? Uh, yes, uh, so part of, uh, by using these features from the toolbox, MIR toolbox, we have uh, the brightness and uh, indeed, this is, that could be a nice uh, feature use or roughness or and that will be simple then to just add it but the risk always is we add more <laughs> features so the, for the retrieval part it's it will make it even longer but yes good any final questions or are you ready for some coffee uh, 
Well, coffee then. Uh, I think, and this is a workshop, and um, it's interesting since we have a we have a delegation from the university, we have some national library people, we have some NIK people, and I also think it's uh, this it would be a great opportunity to to do uh, some kind of mingling to to really also get to know each other because um, one of the aims now of this project is also to to really get uh, more music information with people going in Norway and get the different institutions and people involved to talk to each other a little bit, and that's our our secret goal <laughs> all of this. So, so please do um, talk to, pe to strangers uh, during the coffee break. <laughs> okay, but thanks, uh, uh, you, thanks to Olivier again. And if you want to try it, yeah. To, if you want to try it, uh, there is a device here. You and can download it from App Store, but... Uh, yeah. Thank you. And then after the break, it's um, Robert Engels from NRK. Thank you, Olivier.